Recently, I've been learning about Unity's shader graph. And for my first shader, I made this simple gradient sky box with the stars in it. I thought why not share it with you guys. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple gradient sky box with stars. So yeah, let's get started. So here I'm using this simple scene from one of my previous projects and I don't have any skybox here. So if I just go to the main camera, you can see I've set the background type to solid color. And I have also removed the skybox material from the lighting step as you can see here. So there is no skybox. So in order to create one we're gonna use the shader graph and for that we need to use the universal render pipeline. I've already have it in my project but if you don't just go to windows and package manager and here just search for universal rp as you can see i've already installed this in my project but you just go ahead and do that and once you have it just right click go to create and go to shader and here you have a bunch of shaders to choose from so basically for any other material we would have used this pbr graph but as our skybox doesn't have to be lit so we're gonna use the unlit graph here Alright, so I'm gonna call this one custom skybox or custom SB. Let's double click to open it up. And here it creates another tape for us. So let's maximize this. And here is our man node. This is the man preview here. So you can see how your shader looks here. And the same goes for this blackboard where we store all the properties. So let's just put the man node to here. And as for the gradient, we need to add some colors, right? So let's go to create node and the first one would be color. So we have our color node. And for the color, you can choose anything you like. I'm just gonna go with this one. And also we need a secondary color. So let's just duplicate this node, control D. Let's place it here. Let's select a color for this. And I'm gonna go with this one. Now we also need to be able to change this color inside of the inspector and for that we need to convert these nodes into properties. Right click on them and hit convert to property. And same for the second color. And we can see them here inside our blackboard. So this is color 1 and color 2. So let's just place it somewhere around here. And I'm gonna call this one the top color as we are making a gradient and this one bottom. Alright, so we have top and bottom color and it's time to merge them and in order to do that, we're gonna need another node, which is LARP. And as you already know, the LARP goes through one point to another using this time value. So it's gonna mix both of these colors, the top and bottom one, using this time value here. Let's just put it somewhere around here. And also let's just connect the output node to our to our color inside of our master node. As you can see the result appears here. And for the T here we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use the position of our world. So let's create a position node. And make sure the space is set to world. If you open this, you're gonna get a bunch of options and make sure you choose the world here because we need the world position. So let's just go ahead and normalize the world position. So using the normalize node here. So now we have the normalized world position. And what we need to do now is split these values. So we're gonna use a split node. And now we can use the individual values X, Y and Z. Now that we need to create a vertical gradient, we're gonna use the Y value, which is G here. Let's just go ahead and create another node, which will be a VMAP node, freaking down here. And let's connect the Y here to the input of our VMAP node. And make sure the values remain minus 1, minus 1 and 1 to 0 and 1, because we don't need the minus value here. Alright, so now that we have the positive values, we're gonna connect this output node to a power node. Let's go ahead and do that create a power node all right and what this power node will do is actually give us control over the gradient skybox let's just place it here and if we try to change this value 
as you can see kind of gives us the control over how both of these colors will merge into each other right or the portion we give to each of the color and also to control this from the inspector we need to create another property which will be a vector one let's just call this one height you can call it whatever you want it kind of controls the height of our gradient colors right so let's connect this to the input node all right it looks good basically we have the control over the gradient so let's connect the output node from our power node to the time node of the lerp all right and here you can see the gradient appears and now we can actually control the gradient let's try to change the value to something like one and one looks all right so i'm just gonna go with this one you can of course play around with it so once you are satisfied with the result let's just save the asset here click on save asset and let's minimize this screen so we can test it out and when you have created this maybe you can you will get this error but and if you go ahead and click on save asset again it will just disappear so don't worry about it all right so now in order to apply this we need to create a material here let's clear create a material let's call this skybox material and go to the shader and find the and find the shader graph here it is and select the shader that we created so custom sb and as soon as you do this you will get all these values here so you can so you can just tweak them something like this and yeah you can already see the material changing here so I'm gonna go ahead and put a value that I like 0.45 seems to be a good value you can always just play around with these values and now in order to apply this skybox let's go to the lighting tab and drag and drop the skybox material here and of course it's gonna throw a warning but don't worry about it and also we need to go to our main camera change the environment background type to skybox all right as you can see here our gradient skybox appears and if we try to change the height maybe let's increase it a bit or decrease it yep you can see it affecting our skybox which looks pretty good so i'm just gonna go ahead and leave this at 0.45 and now if we try to play this you can see it looks cool right but it kind of missed something which is the stars so let's go ahead and add the stars to our skybox here Now in order to add these stars, we're gonna go ahead and open up our shader. Okay, let's bring it here. Let's zoom in on it. And now what we're gonna do is just, let's say just create another shader here. So let's go down a bit, create a new node. And this one will be the tiling and offset node. Let's bring it here. So this is my first time making the shadow graph, so don't hold it against me, all right? And now for the UV input, we're gonna go ahead and bring these down because we're gonna use the input of our UV node, all right? And now here we can change the tiling and, off tiling and offset of our node. For the tiling, I'm gonna go ahead and put the default values at for the X and four for the Y. We can always go ahead and create a property that we can control from the inspector. So a vector 2 here for the tiling. Alright and let's just go ahead and set our default value for this. Connect this to our tiling input. Alright and now connect this output node to, a, to our noise node. All right, and as you can see here, it looks kind of like a little dots on the screen. So we're gonna use them as our starts. So you can change the angle of these dots. For now, we're gonna go ahead and create another node here, which will be a saturated node. I don't know what it does, but so I'll just leave the reference where I learned this. So you can just go ahead and try this out yourself. Now the saturated node output will go into a 1-node. 
which kind of gives like a negative output of this. And finally, a power node. So we're going to use this power node to control the intensity of starts or the size of the starts, you can say. As you can see, it kind of looks like stars in this guy, right? And here, if we try to change the cell density, we can control the our starts count. So we're just gonna go ahead and create another property for this too. So vector one, I'm just gonna call this one starts. And for the default value, I'm gonna use five. So let's drag and drop this here and connect this to our cell density. All right, so all just left is connect both of these together in order to get the starts to our gradient skybox. So for that, we're just gonna need a add addition node. So add add node and connect both of these together and add the output of both of the nodes together. Let's just delete this and connect this to the color input. All right, and as you can see, little dots appear on our material. They are a bit blurry, but, but we're gonna play around, so don't worry about it. Let's just save this. And also we can just go ahead and make a property to control the size of the stars too. So let's just go ahead and do that. A vector one here. Let's just call this one star size and default this to 150. All right, let's connect this one and let's save our let's save our shader. Go back inside of Unity and as you can see, the stars already appear in the sky, but they are a bit blurry. And the reason why it is happening is because I have to get rid of the depth of field from my post-processing effects. And now as you can see the stars are, are more clear. Alright, and here you can play around with these values. Let's try to change the, the star count. I think somewhere around 3 looks good. And for the star size, you can just play around with this. I'm just gonna keep it as is and let's try to play and they look pretty impressive don't you think so just tell me how to look and so just go ahead and experiment with it be creative so that's kind of it for this video and I hope you liked it and if you did make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one